Getting into Bitcoin mining for less than $500 is pretty exciting. And then you double that with the fact you can run a full node, which basically means you're running the Bitcoin blockchain in every way possible. You're, pl you're processing, processing, you're processing transactions, right? Not just as a miner, but also as a node, which if you don't know, node basically like runs the Bitcoin network. That's what all these different nodes around the world make it decentralized. And so that's enter, you know, fireworks, laser beams, whatever, you know, enter this miner. But here's the problem, okay? You hear that sound? The sound too good. My $500 Bitcoin miner, and that's the cheap version. Technically, I actually have the expensive version. Not technically, just simply. This thing's a thousand bucks. And it's not working right now. So what exactly happened? We're gonna break it down today, get to the bottom of it, an updated review on the Futurebit Apollo mini BTC miner ranging from $500 to $1,000 depending on your configuration. My name is Vosk. I'm a full-time crypto miner that brings some crazy stuff to the tube here on Voscoin. Let's jump into it. So just logged in and it was just at 4.6% hardware errors. And now we can see it's jumping to 47. Basically what's happening here is when we really look at the performance, we look at the statistics, we look at the temperature, we look at the fan speed, we listen to it, something's wrong. So there is an update available. So let's go ahead and update that. Hopefully the device doesn't crash while we do this and we brick the whole thing. I'll be honest, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way, but I'm a maniac. So here we are. But let's take a step back for a second. Okay, so we previously reviewed this minor, you know, overall review. We also have a tutorial video on kind of what it is, how to set it up and, and the unique, pretty cool benefits of it. Right, and I've touched on the mining profitability before. Today we're going to review that even further before it stopped working properly. Okay, so we'll give it a fair review on the mining profitability there. Uh, at the end of the day, I mean, mining Bitcoin is incredible. I'm building out an industrial, smaller, right, but still an industrial style Bitcoin mining farm and I'll mine other cryptocurrencies there as well. I'm totally into, bullish, love cryptocurrency mining and obviously Bitcoin proof of work Okay, SHA-256 is where it's at. But let's work our way from the top to the bottom real quick. So Bitmain is kind of the standard when it comes to ASIC miners. All of these miners we deal with today are application specific integrated circuit miners. These are all purpose-built machines. All they do is one thing, mine SHA-256, the Bitcoin mining algorithm here. So we could get 110 terahash a second. It will consume 3,250 watts for $4,400 here direct from Bitmain, ASIC miner manufacturer. I have no affiliate code, affiliation. Actually, um, <laughs> you know, Bitmain says that they are the builders, right? Personally, I think that the Bitmain Antminer E9 is actually kind of a scam. Or, no, I, I think that it is a scam. This was their reply to my $9,999 scam short on the Antminer E9 because basically Ethereum will not be mineable much longer and then this thing will be hardly profitable. But they don't really lay that out in the product description, now do they? But basically for four or $5,000 delivered, including customs probably, you're gonna get a miner that is pretty powerful. You need 240 volt electricity, right? You need, need industrial kind of style electricity, but you can route that in your own home. If you're like, dude, what the hell are you talking about? Watch our electricity guide. It's actually pretty simple. You could also just get an Antminer S9, right? For used, very clearly used here, for two, 300 bucks delivered with a power supply right now. Uh, this mine's at 13 and a half terahash a second. And I mean, what are these pull? Like 1,200 watts, if I remember right. Put some specs up on the screen and then you put some spec on my name. Put some respect on my name. Y'all understand me? When y'all saying we my name, put some respect on Now we compare that to this mini miner. Difference is this is quieter. This is smaller, it looks cooler, and it also operates a full node. Keep in mind, plug and play full nodes from competitors cost 
two, three, four, five hundred dollars on their own. One thing to consider if that is a value to you, but remember you don't make any money running a Bitcoin node. It's more of like an altruistic support the network kind of thing. This device comes with one terabyte if you get the best one, and the ME based SSD drive. It's quiet. It consumes less than 200 watts of power, I hope so, because that's all the power supply can do. Six CPU cores and 44 ASIC cores here. And so we come down here, we look at the specs, right? We see four gigabytes of RAM on this. We're using an ARM based CPU, full node sync in uh, less than 48 hours. The power supply operates on, you know, your standard wall electricity in a US home or a higher voltage, right? 120 to 240 volt uh, support on that PSU. We see that it mines from two to four terahash a second and consumes between basically 125 to 200 watts. They have a 94% efficiency rate on their power supply and it's powered with two six pin PCIe connections. Again, you don't have to get their power supply or use it. It is a very expensive unit, but it is nice that it matches. And if you're doing this as more of like a desk thing, put it in your office, show it off, and this makes sense. Otherwise, there's many other power supplies that are the same price that can do more um, or be cheaper, right? So like say an EDGA ATX power supply that would be used for gaming or mining rigs. Or perhaps you could just get like a standard server PSU like the HP ones with breakout boards or you could grab something like the Bitmain Antminer power supplies. So just to put this into perspective, right? You get 110 terahash with 3,250 watts with the Bitmain Antminer S19 Pro, okay? Over here, you get one to two terahash a second per 100 watts on the future bit Apollo. Basically, it's incredibly less efficient. You're getting a lot more with the S19 Pro here. Hold on, page will reload in a few seconds, so we will dig a little bit deeper on that front. But let's look at its mining profitability before this thing basically imploded. Nothing changed, it runs in an air-conditioned, air-filtered environment. Okay, this, this thing lives a lavish life. Okay, it's on a surge protector, a high, an expensive APC one, right? This thing is set up as good as it can be. So before we were pushing just on the normal mode there, 1.92 terahash a second per day on average, mining us 800 and about 35 Satoshis per day. So that equates to round up 17 cents a day. Unfortunately, at a 12 cent per kilowatt hour rate, we're consuming roughly over 30 cents per day in electricity, which means simply put, this thing loses money every day. Every day I run this, I lose 15 cents or more on a $1,000 device that isn't even working right now. At least I run the full node. <coughs> Well, at least I did. So I've now refreshed. We can see that this thing is starting to mine at over 1.8 terahash a second. Hardware error is up to 4.3 here. We click over to the node. You can see that we are unsynced because the device has, well, it's been out of sync. We have more than half of the, sp the space re remaining on the hard drive here. I'll click back over here to the actual miner. You can see the hardware errors are starting to rise. So let's put this into another perspective. If we make basically 16, almost 17 cents a day, let's say our electricity's free, hopefully you live in a dorm room or something. And just to be clear, it's not even free. You know, they bake that into your price. So if you plug a miner and you're not leeching anything, you're getting yours, okay? Because they get theirs. Colleges are insanely profitable. Absolutely insanely profitable. Another day into the subject though. So over the next year, you'd pull about $61, but Again, actually, you would be down $61 because of your electricity bill. So, good news though, if you held all this coin in Bitcoin 10X, then you got $608, which is still much less than the purchase price. But if Bitcoin 20X, then <laughs> if you mine with this for a year and nothing really changes in Bitcoin 20Xs, all right, keep your hopium high, my boys. 20 X's, then you'll be able to clear the purchase price and the electricity bill, and you can even go out to lunch. Probably just once. 
Interestingly enough though, this update, maybe just uh, basically a month off, maybe the miner needed a little PTO, it's working now. It's working again. And the fan, the major fan, the important fan, the fan that's actually in the miner device is spinning. The fan on the power supply is also spinning and it's not making a terrible screeching sound. So in this climactic endeavor, this thing is back online and mining again. Hardware errors are staying pretty consistent here, less than 5% hash rate, averaging out at its historical pool recorded hash rate, getting 65 watts per tera hash, consuming 120 watts per the device here. Showing an uptime here of nine minutes, all 44 ASIC chips are online here. And the node continues to sync back up. We've got 11 out of 32 connections. Oh, make that 12. We see the network hash rate, network difficulty. Again, the blockchain size continues to increase as we download these transactions and get up to date. Every block adds a little bit of data to the chain. The blockchain will grow indefinitely. I just hope we can keep up. So there you have it, off the cuff updated review of the Apollo BTC miner that's gonna take a 20X for me to break even on this and get a free lunch and pay the electricity bill. I think it's a really cool device. Apollo did send me this device to review. Um, I didn't have to do this video. I did this video because I felt like it, I wanted to. I never wanna like have you not know something and you feel misled. Uh, I wasn't paid anything. They won't even put an affiliate program in because they don't really want to support content creators, I guess. Good luck in the bear market. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I pushed on them to, to, if we could do a custom Voscoin edition, which I think would be really fun. Would it be more interested other than like the mini miner aspect or like the limited edition collectible aspect is actually the ability to run nodes and me not being a Bitcoin maximalist the other opportunities we have with adding additional nodes potentially into this device and and really the things that we could do with that 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 is like what makes that go from interesting to me to really exciting but uh they, they had no interest they said they could give me five percent off and i could put my sticker on it i just hope you put your sticker on that subscribe button and it keeps it stuck down and you're subscribed forever and also make it make it two stickers put the other one on the thumbs up and then leave a comment down below let me know your thoughts on this device if you would still be interested in a limited edition version and uh as always seriously thanks so much for watching tuning in here on the channel and uh watch out we got some pretty cool videos in the pipeline